and sorrow questions sorts and tomorrow times I didn't know right from wrong but in every situation that gave blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong oh I've seen Beloved, the Grace Community Church family extends our heartfelt, deepest condolences to Sister Lucille uh, and all of the children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and relatives of our beloved Sister Geneva Jolly. She was the third eldest member in the church up until her passing. And so, you know, we have learned to value those who are 
Um, the Bible says to rise in the presence of the hoary head, and we certainly honor those who are the elderly among us. The word of the Lord says in Psalm 39, 4 and following, O Lord, make me to know my end, and what is the measure of my days? Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a mere hand's breadth, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Surely a man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather it. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who has done this. Remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. When you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. Surely all mankind is a mere breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am a sojourner with you, with you, a guest like all my fathers. Look away from me that I may smile again before I depart and am no more. The psalmist here helps us to understand the brevity of life and that all of our life is a futility if it's not lived to the praise and honor and the glory of God. I'm grateful today that we're not here to celebrate someone who did not know God, but someone who knew the Lord and did her share, did her part to ensure that others got to know the Lord too. Today, as is common in funerals, we will get to know the, bere the beloved whom we are here celebrating more as the stories are told, as, the, as her life achievements are put on display. And I'm so grateful that despite these COVID times, we could still gather and celebrate the life of Geneva Jolly and sing the songs that she loved and remember with great fondness her impact upon us. And so let us begin our time together with this great song. I invite the musicians to come and help us to sing together How Great Thou Art. And if you're not a family member, Please stand as we get ready to sing. Elder Pete will come and lead us. Good morning. If you are able to sing, let's do so now as we praise the Lord together.
appropriate to always begin any service, and particularly a funeral, by invoking the Lord's presence, grateful for that song of adoration that leads us now into our uh, prayer moments. I invite Elder Dave Hanna to come now and give the invocation. Following that, we will uh, sing again, I will praise the Lord. And then that will be followed by Mrs. Dorothy Major, niece, who will come and read the great psalm, Psalm 23, in our hearing. Elder Dave, thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. And good morning especially to the bereaved family, who most of you I know very well. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you once again for another day that you have given us. And we thank you, Father, for who you are, the great God, who created all of us. You know us well. And so we are grateful. But of course, Father, we come to you with grieving hearts for the loss of our dear sister, Geneva. Father, it's a bittersweet moment because we have lost her, we will miss her, and, and Father, but we also thank you that she was a child of God. We thank you, dear Father, that she knew you as her Lord and Savior, and as a result of knowing you, absent from the body, she is present with you. And so we just thank you so much, dear Father, for her life and all that she means to all of us. And Father, the family especially, during these moments, bring them peace, bring them comfort, their God, as they go through this moment of bereavement. We pray, dear God, that they would cherish all of the wonderful memories that Geneva left for them to see. And so we just thank you again for her life. We pray that her life will touch many others. And even with this service today, uh, may persons be touched, especially those who may not know you 
as their personal savior. And so, Father, we pray for the speakers or all of the participants today. Uh, may they continue to acknowledge you. And, Father, as a, res uh, as a result of the message of the man of God today, may persons be touched, may persons be comforted, and especially the family members today. Be with them, their God, during this time, and may you continue to provide the comfort, the care that they need. Father, we just thank you, and all of these we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Elder Dave. Let's stand as we give in our response, our affirmation that we will continue to praise the Lord with every breath we take. I will praise you, Lord, with every breath. start over again and continue to praise the Lord. It means that we don't stop. I think that's the point the writer was getting at, that we don't stop the process of praising the Lord. All right? Even in death, we can praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Good. Thank you, Elder Pete. And we wish to welcome those of you who are watching by way of live stream. We're so grateful that if there's one thing we can say good out of COVID-19, it's made uh, everybody know how to live stream their services, eh? And so we want to welcome those who are watching by way of live stream. But I want to especially um, say welcome to uh, my good friend, Superintendent of the Assemblies of God in the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Island, Reverend Patrick Paul, who is here. And he's here with our good friend, 
Bradley Hanfield, who, of course, is Sister Lucille's pastor there in Turks and uh, Caicos. And uh, I've had the privilege of getting to know him um, many occasions. And it's good to have him with us today. You'll be hearing from him a little bit later. I um, can see from the program, I do not know him personally. The Honorable Kyle Knowles is present. Is, is he, is this a gentleman next to you, Brother Hanfield? No? Um, is the Honorable Knowles here that we can know where he is and make sure we... He's not here, okay. He's on his way, okay, wonderful. And um, of course, our very own uh, senior pastor emeritus, Dr. Rex Major, is here. He's no stranger to any of us. And of course, he would have been Sister Jolly's pastor um, for some of her best years. And then we've, uh, see, we see a, a, a number of our former members who have moved on and are benefiting other churches. We want to welcome all of you. I'm not going to call names in case I miss somebody. But it's good to have you back. But they say, back where we belong, eh? It's good to see you all. Praise the Lord. We welcome all of you to Grace Community Church. Even though the occasion is sad, it is celebratory because we have no doubt where Sister Estina, you know, Sister Lucille, I did not know that was her name. <laughs> Estina Geneva Jolly has gone on. Praise God. We know where she is because she served the Lord faithfully. And so without further ado, may I invite to come and do our first scripture reading from the Old Testament, Psalm 23, Mrs. Dorothy Major. There she is. Good evening. Good morning, church. First of all, I want to give God thanks for my aunt's life and for the memories that she, we shared, the stories she would tell about family generation, the jokes we'd shared, and the trips to the fabric store. I will miss her greatly. Now let's read the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There ends the reading of God's word. Thank you, Ms. Major. And now, Mrs. Miss Nerissa Hamilton, a cousin, will come with her musical selection. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd just like to say on behalf of the family of the late Mr. Timothy and the late Mrs. Dorothy Hamilton, I'd like to extend condolences to my cousins. May God strengthen you and comfort you during this difficult time. Beulah Land, sweet Beulah. I'm kind of home, sick for a country. 
tree to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken. For time won't matter anymore. Beulah land, I'm longing for you. I'll stand there, my home shall be eternal, Beulah land, sweet Beulah. Looking now just across the river to where my faith shall end in sight. There's just a few more days to labor than I will take my heavenly flight. I'll go to Beulah Land. I'm longing for you, and someday on thee I'll stand where my home shall be. Eternal Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, Beulah land, I'm longing for. Stand there, my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land.
Sister Larissa, we are so grateful you have mildly enriched our service with that contribution. Thank you very much. I believe uh, the Honorable uh, Kyle Knowles is here, nephew, uh, and he will, yes? Okay, you're standing in for him, okay. Um, he will introduce himself, and he will be reading our second scripture reading that aids in our service today from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 54. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Drex Wilsimo from Community Fellowship Center in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Um, Honorable Kyle is running late, so I'll substitute for him. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 54. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Here in our scripture reading, amen. Stand if you're able. Then we'll
jolly when she was with us how she loved to fellowship she loved to hold on to you and feel you and say come here you can't leave and hold you tight and focus on me I'm talking to you <laughs> that's what she's doing I guess up in that wonderful place, Amen. fellowshipping with all who've gone on before her that she can now touch, yeah. she can now see, mm -hmm. in the presence, ultimately, yeah. of the one who made it possible for her to be there. Yeah. Amen. Yes? Yeah. You share that view? Yeah. You had that experience with Sister Jolly, yeah. who loved you and touched you and yeah. made sure you knew that yeah. you were loved? Yeah. All right. Amen. Glad reunion day. Amen. Amen. Well, Elder Pete has begun the memories of Sister Jolly, and there are coming a group of special people who are going to continue that. Uh, first up is going to be Sister Shirley Burroughs, who is going to come, and then a representative from the, la the senior ladies' small group. They will be followed by Senior Pastor Bradley Hanfield, who I introduced earlier. Presbyter, Assemblies of God, Turks and Caicos, but the pastor of Community Fellowship Center, and then also a rep representative from C.V. Bethel High School will come and offer condolences. Following that will be the hymn of assurance and can it be, if you can come in that order, we will like to be blessed by your contribution. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Geneva Jolly, my friend, the name that really depicts her because she was always jolly. <laughs> she was also a lady of excellence and a good example to us all. And um, it was so refreshing that she always refers to her Bible because, you know, she looks in that all the time. And any, any, kind, of, um, any kind of discussion or anything, she will tell you, the Bible says. Sister Jolly spoke a lot about her earlier, like earlier days when she went to school to be a beautician, about her teacher, her, the people she met, and all of these we would share all the time. She gave me a bag some years ago, and um, I said to her, Sister Jolly, I didn't realize that you were so talented. She just smiled, and she said, I can make hats, plait, sew, and all these. I said, okay. One special thing about her was when sharing her experiences as a Christian, she got very excited. She would emphasize, you know, she would emphasize the word because she loves the word. And she'd tell us that we should, we should all be, be part of it. We should obey it as women. I didn't speak to her for a few days when Lucille called and she said, Mom is not doing well. I immediately called her and went and visited her. When, when she was, was, I'm sorry, 
when, when her, whenever I called Sister Jolly, she would say, you know, I was thinking about you. That was, that was always her. I was thinking about you, and we'll talk and talk, and you'll talk forever because Sister Jolly could talk. <laughs> so she just enjoyed talking about her Lord, her children, her travels, her late husband. And of course, she did most of the talking. I, I did very little. <laughs> One while, I, I visited her after I got that call from Lucille because I didn't speak to her for a few days. And I called her, then I went. And we sat and we talked and we shared about the Lord and all the things, you know, she loves to talk about her children, about what they're doing, about where, and her last couple months she spent um, during the summertime, she went to Provo to, to Lucille, and she was telling me about what good times she had, the people she saw, the people visited her, and I said, well, Sister Jolly, I guess when you go went back, you're gonna stay. But well, she didn't answer that. <laughs> so we talked about God's goodness and his faithfulness. She said to me, I'm ready whenever the Lord calls. And this was, also, this was always her. She said she was always ready because she knew that it will be soon. We had a time of prayer which was very precious. And I, th I thank the Lord for her. I know she is resting, resting in the arms of Jesus. A life well lived, trusting in her Savior's love and care. So we just say to, to, to Lucille, the rest of the children who are left behind that Sister Jolly was ready to go, and she said so, so many times. So we thank the Lord for a life well lived. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carolyn Tinker, by the way. I'm a member of the ladies' small group, Wednesday morning small group. Um, Sister Jolly was an active member of our group. And on behalf of the group, I wish to extend our deepest sympathy to the family. Lucille, we know you well. Antonio, especially, and all the other family members. We are saddened by her passing, but as believers, we have the, the assurance that to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord, and so we can rejoice that she is with her Lord. Our group members fondly remember Sister Jolly. We saw her as a person who lived her name, Jolly, all the time. She was happy and had a laughter that was all her own. When she walked into our meeting room, she was always all smiles, nicely dressed, youthful in attitude. She loved to talk, and as has been said, whenever she had something she wanted to say to you, she got your undivided attention by her firm grip on your, on her, your arm. Yeah, but she would always engage you in conversation, very friendly and cheerful, and we love that about her. Sister Jolly set a good example of faith in the Lord and love for his word. She was faithful in group attendance, and I know, I remember personally in the past years, when she had to be absent, she would always call me and find out where we were in our Bible study book and tell me that 
she had been doing her homework. And then on a personal note, that would run into a long conversation. She told me so much history about Turks and Caicos, you know, at the time we talked. But I love talking to her, and I love learning about the history that she shared. Okay, she enjoyed participating in the group, and we enjoyed her presence. It was our pleasure in 2014 to host a luncheon in her order, in, rec in her honor, in recognition of her 80th birthday. That occasion provided us with a special opportunity to show and tell her that we appreciated her. We thank, Sister, we thank God for Sister Jolly's time of fellowship with us, and she will be missed. We will all miss her. Family members, we will continue to pray for you that as you go through this difficult time, each of you will experience in a fresh new way the strength and grace of the God of all comfort. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Let me acknowledge the presence of my colleagues, uh, Pastor Lyle Battle. Good to see you again. We don't get to see each other that often, but it's good to be in your company today. And Pastor Rex Major, good to see you again. And uh, General Superintendent Reverend Patrick Paul, it's a pleasure to see you today. And all of the ministers on the pulpit this morning, and the members and followers of this church. I want to also acknowledge from the Turks and Caicos Islands, Elder Draxwell Seymour from Community Fellowship Center, and Minister Judy Knowles. We are here today with our dear sister, Lucille, to celebrate the homegoing of her precious mother. And uh, I just want to say that Mrs. Jolly is a woman from my hometown of Bottle Creek, North Caicos. And she never allowed me to forget that. In fact, she was one of the childhood friends of my mother. And so she has a long history of relationship with my family. And it is so um, interesting to observe the life of those individuals who have made such significant contri contributions to more than one country. Because um, Mrs. Jolly and her husband were quite instrumental in the early politics of the Turks and Caicos Islands. And she shared a lot with me about her involvement, her and her husband, and politics in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Um, and to see that her children made contribution here in the Bahamas also, and to see Lucille return to the Turks and Caicos Islands, where she is continuing to serve in many capacities in the local church and in our community there in Providenciales. This is the life and, and legacy of Geneva Jolly, Jolly to the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Um, one, one of the things that she shared with me that I found interesting was her involvement with the youth. And uh, she always told me of how she, she would say to me, and she would grab onto my hand, just like you all are saying, <laughs> Pastor, you all need to get out of this church building and get out in, get out in the community. These young people need you all. And she would say how she, you know, she would uh, you know, interact with the young men here in Nassau on the streets when she would come in contact with them in her neighborhood. And I, you know, I found that inspirational. And uh, I, I found that as an example that we all can follow, that we need to touch the next generation and impart 
good into their lives. Um, you know, ever so often, she, she would come to the Turks and Caicos Islands to, to visit Lucille, and when she would come, she would always attend church at Community Fellowship Center. And after every service, when I would finish preaching, she would give me, you know, a sort of critique of the sermon, you know, and, um, and one of the things she, she would say to me, now, now pastor, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta get rid of them notes sometime. <laughs> yeah. and I always like uh, to interact with elderly people because they have so much uh, experience, you know, of, of life. And Sister Geneva was able to share so many things with me that gave me encouragement in the ministry. She would say to me, you know, I, I could preach too. <laughs> I, you know, and I know the word. And then when she began to, to, to quote the scriptures and, 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 and share from the word, you, you know, it was evident that indeed she, she did know the word of God. At her last trip to, to the Turks and Caicos Islands, she made a special effort to come to my office and see me. And she spent a long time, and not, normally she would spend a long time talking to me and Sister Lucy would say, now come on mommy, you know, you gotta let Pastor Bradley go. But this time, Lucille was in India with, with her, and we got to <laughs> spend as much time as we wanted, and she had all the things she wanted to say. And I just felt like she was giving me a special, you know, message and special attention. And uh, while she was talking to me, I just felt, had the sense that, boy, this might be the last time that Sister Geneva talked to me. And she gave me some good advice. She gave me some firm warnings as a man of God. And uh, when she was leaving, she said to me, if I don't see you again in the Turks and Caicos Islands, I can see you when we get to heaven. And so I, you know, I'm looking forward to when we all get to heaven. And what a day of rejoicing that will be. Sister Jolly has given us all occasion to smile, to laugh, and to rejoice down here. And I'm sure that we will all see her again and continue our rejoicing in heaven some sweet day. Thank you all, and God bless you. Sister Lucille, you know we are praying for you and your family. Is a representative from C.V. Bethel here? This gentleman coming here? Okay, good. Welcome, sir. Come. Just introduce yourself and get started. Pastor Lyle Bethel in the Grace Community Church family, members of the Bereave family and friends. Good morning. I am Principal Harcourt McCoy representing the Government Christian Private School on East Street South. <laughs> and so if by now you don't know where that is, I'm the principal of C.V. Bethel. <laughs> a popular definition for a family is a group of parents, children, living together related by birth, marriage, and adoption. At C.V. Bethel, we have a slightly different view of what a family is. My definition says, it's a united group of professionals bound together by loyalty, support, and encouragement. Although I don't know personally the, the bereaved, um, Miss Antonia Jolly, is one of our family members, and I, I use that word very intentionally. She is one of our family members. Miss Jolly 
is a role model teacher and leader, um, character traits, um, stellar in every way. Um, this suggests that her biological family have offered some measure of support to get the um, wonderful individual that we currently experience. And so the maternal influence, all of the indicators are there that her mother was very, very influential in the kind of person we are daily experiencing and have benefit for, for our students. Psalms 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, and him will I trust. Well, this morning, my words are very simple, just to speak a little bit about strength and family. Well, we know that our strength comes from the Lord, but in this time, true strength is gonna come from this family, and um, from CV Bethel, we will continue to um, not stand beside, but stand behind and offer any measure of support and encouragement that we can for such a wonderful member of our family. I saw this quote last night and it really spoke to me. Wherever a beautiful soul has been, there will always be beautiful memories. And I, I, I think that was very, very um, timely. Miss Jolly, I first met her um, at my former school. Um, she used to come over to do um, the PGCSE marking and I always observed her as um, a mild-mannered spirit. And then she ended up taking my course at the College of the Bahamas. And of course, now she supports us as one of our subject coordinators where she continues to mold the lives um, of many, many students. Um, she has a very vibrant department, um, a respected professional. And so this morning, I am bringing condolences on behalf of our um, many subject coordinators, our administrators, students, staff, um, parents, um, who Ms. Jolly has influenced. And we are so glad to be able to be here for her in a time like this. And so on behalf of our administrators, our teachers, our parents, please receive warmly our deepest condolences and support. May the God of all peace and comfort bring you peace and true comfort during this time. Thank you. Thank all of you who shared and gave us the insight that you brought to Sister Jolly. Let's stand as we answer this question. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me? Oh, 
great hymn of assurance, um, clearly one of those songs that must be sung at a funeral service, at a home-going service. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke, the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. No condemnation. Now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. We know that Sister Jolly had that kind of assurance because she trusted Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. I have served as a senior pastor of Grace for the last 19 years. I replaced uh, senior pastor Rex Major in senior pastor emeritus Rex Major in the role, but I've always felt that his ministry to uh, our more mature brothers and sisters, I know how to sit small and step aside when um, times like this arise. And so as Sister Lucille. And I spoke, I said, Sister Lee, let me make it clear. The first thing I want to say is, is um, I, I expect that Pastor Rex will be the, the man to have the privilege to do the eulogy. And uh, so we, we all agreed. And um, I have come to deeply respect this man, not just because he, I, I followed him, but he has made a name for himself in the Bahamas, in the Caribbean, and parts of the world as being one who rightly divides the word of truth in a way that he makes plain that which is confusing to some, and he leaves you with no choice. That you need to make a decision for Jesus, and you need to make it now. Amen. And so it is with a great sense of pleasure that I invite to come and address us at this time, Senior Pastor Emeritus Rex Major. Pastor Rex.
be. It's too cold. It's too cold. Cobble that's red. Yes, the uh, medical staff all around, wherever I go, have warned me that when I go to the pulpit at my middle-aged stand, <laughs> I must not use the same mic that has been used before, and I should wipe all the platform around me Anyway, I think we should be sensible. So it, it is not because this is a more expensive mic. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I couldn't, can't believe it. I'm up before noon, that's marvelous. I have two hours now. Somebody mentioned Pastor Paul as being here. Yes. Yeah, you, you got on such pretty clothes, they can't see you well. Please stand. I know all says beautiful. <laughs> he, he supported me so well in so many ways. Yeah. Just a short prayer together. Father, we need to simply be enlightened and encouraged and motivated by your truth. Amen. Um, I was puzzled in many ways as what, what, what emphasis to make I want to read a section from Facebook Bahamas. You won't believe this, but it's written by a Bahamian. And he's on Facebook every single day. I'm not going to call his name. Here's what he wrote just this week. You listening? Children of God, please note. Maybe you've read it. Maybe many of you have read it. Eh? You could never go to heaven or hell after physical death because heaven and hell are not physical places. They're states of consciousness and conditions of the mind. We all now living at the lowest conscious level called animal also known as hell. The eternal hellfire is our burning lust and desires for the flesh and for the material things of this world system. In order to ascend to the highest conscious level, we must first be righteous, meaning treating our fellow man as we would like to be treated then we must meditate on climbing to the top of the tree of life via our spinal column, and so on. So after reading that, and then sensing that this is the season when heaven is in focus, Jesus came from he came from heaven, the angels to the shepherds, and came from heaven. Heaven, heaven took over earth for a while there. So I thought I would just emphasize that there is a place to go. So it's going to be simple and straightforward and nothing new, but hopefully everything true, all right? This morning, almost afternoon, during this homegoing service of our dear sister, didn't know she was Estina. 
the gospel is still winning its way. Now, folks, if you're there and I'm here, I don't want to be alone, so let me know you're there, all right? Because as we think of Sister Jolly departing this life and leaving us here on this earth, we can, by the authority of that same gospel, make this bold claim. We can say of Geneva Jolly, because she herself embraced Christ's gospel and all the benefits it offers, that long before today, she has left this, earth, this earthly house. And we can affirm further that according to the gospel's sure claim, the inner tenant, who we all knew as Sister Jolly, that real person, the one made in the image of God, the one redeemed by the shed blood of our Lord Jesus, the one born again of the Holy Spirit, the one indwelt by that same Holy Spirit, the one who loved and served her Lord gladly, that very real person has already moved out of her temporal earthly dwelling place, her body. And that, having left this tenant house, she has instantly gone to be with her Lord Amen. in his presence. Amen. We thank God that powerful forces beyond our control and our intellectual understanding supervise the safe release of that inner life and made sure that there was a safe delivery right in the presence of Christ. A vacancy in the body occurred. That body, without the spirit, the Bible describes as being dead. Let it be known that at the very exact moment of that experience of what we call death, the true child of God was made absent from true body. And same time, at that very precise and exact time, she entered the presence of the Lord. Now this is the issue. Please listen carefully now. Note that the key concept is that the loved one is present with the Lord. Interesting. Paul, nor James, nor John, nor even Jesus, took the time to give us very many details. What it would mean to be, what it would mean to be in the presence of the Lord. Is she praying? Preaching? Praising? Conversing? They don't say so, be better not. Now, you and I here today can testify to the fact that she is not here with us. That we can testify to. That we know. And that is why we're here now. We know, even without a Bible witness, that some drastic change has taken place. And we all know. And medical experts have so testified and signed documents that someone called Estina Gen Geneva Jolly is no longer among us. Yes. You could even distribute our property now, right? You, you, you can she her clothes with someone else. Well, if we can, by logical observation, determine her absence to be real and factual, then let us believe the other truth, which we cannot, by our own standards of judgment, verify. 
Yet, these two basic truths are tied together in one sentence. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. Why don't believe it? We know the first is true by observation. Why not believe the others that you can't see? You don't know everything by sight. Now we must embrace them both with the same degree of fact and certainty. You with me? This dear saint of God, at this very present moment, while we are here, some of us in tears and other what was, now on this Sunday, 22nd, of, 22nd, right? Of December? Oh, what a Sunday. I'm in church. <laughs> that happens to you? <laughs> now in a very real, live, and listen carefully now. Those of you who think that this is this is it, what you into now. This is not it. It's a sham. I'm telling you, it's a shell. The pretty house you built, it rot, you know. The pretty face you make up, it rot too. There has to be something more substantial. Because deep inside of us, we yearn for the permanence. At this very present moment, this dear saint of God, now on this Wednesday, 22nd of December, 2022, is even now, 21, 21. It's even now. Even now, even now, in a very real, lively, enjoyable, relaxed, satisfied state of joy and peace now. She is with her Lord. And in this context of divine enlightenment left us by the articulate words of one of God's greatest spokesmen named Paul. He doesn't say who else is with her, with the Lord. We do have a few hints. But what we know and what is most important is to know this. God the Father sent his beloved son from heaven, from his pre-existing existence in heaven, from heaven, from his heavenly glory and splendor to come to this earth by the virgin womb of Mary to become a real man, real human male. If he were to talk about gender, there's a good struggle right here. He was not non-gender. I'm serious about this now, very serious. He was not feminine either. He was male. He was man. Uh, please, oh dear, what are we coming to? Oh God, what are we coming to? With that human body, he was sent by God the Father to go to the cross to become the final blood sacrifice. The final. The final blood sacrifice. No more. Done with. He'll destroy some of these lies going around in. Demanded by the holiness and justice of, of God himself. If man will reach God then this special man must make the bridge. There's no other bridge. Your church connection is not a bridge to God without Jesus. 
You understand that now? Because you're nice and cultured and clean and decent, that don't count. You're still a sinner lost. You still have righteousness which are filthy rags in, in the sight of God. So you still want me to preach or has he had enough, eh? <laughs> With that human body, listen carefully, he was sent by God to Father to go to the cross to become the final blood sacrifice. Jesus died for our sins. Come on, man. He died for your sins. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank God he was willing. Yeah. Thank God he was ready. Yeah. Thank God he was competent, yeah. capable. Yeah. Suppose he was sinful. Sister Geneva is now in the very presence of her Lord. All of this good news of our present state of affairs is possible only because the gospel of Jesus Christ made it happen. Which means if any family member, if any friend, if any neighbor will hope to share her tomorrow, they must share her Jesus, her Christ. I'm a little troubled at the weakness of our gospel proclamation in this city. We are, don't be angry with me now. We are more concerned that you're well, and that's fine, nice to be well. But well bodies die. We're concerned about being educated, intellectually precise, that's fine too, but they die. We're concerned about having a good job and a nice house. We leave them. But what we don't leave is our identity. We are a person forever. We are so constituted that we cannot be non-existing. Ever. Somewhere we will exist forever. We cannot be non-existing. And when we leave earth, that's not the last departure for us. Dear family, friends, and well wishes, there is more good news emanating from the gospel. The same gospel of Jesus Christ, which she personally embraced, also guarantees that the Lord Jesus Christ, again, the center of the story, will bring her back from heaven to rejoin her resurrected body. Here is a truth to grasp. Something about the created body that God honors is identity forever. So much so, without that body, she exists happily as a person. But she must have that body for her eternal destiny. But that body must be fitted in a way to suit that kind of living. This body came only for earth living, only earth dwelling. She must now have a body so reconstructed that it suits another environment, totally different from this. So Jesus is going to handle that too. He's going to come back. He will descend from heaven. And he will bring Geneva with him, the real Geneva. But she needs the body that was laid in the ground or whatever, however we got rid of it, to be a real, final, eternal person. And that body with his identity, must be renewed and restructured in the way to suit this new environment. And so a resurrection will take place for those who have died. And they will be beautiful, 
First Corinthians puts it so beautiful. Oh, so sweet. That which was soon mortal will come back immortal. That which is soon corruptible will come back incorruptible. And we shall be changed. He will descend from heaven. You, 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 you must sometimes appreciate the place of Jesus in this whole plan. You know, he's following the Father's rules all along. Do you know that? Eh? All he's doing is exhibiting in action what the Father is desiring. See, it's a love affair between Father and Son that we don't know very much about. The son said, right on earth to his people, I do always the things that please the father. What a, what a statement. And the father said in heaven, ha ha, that's the spirit. So he's gonna be rewarded. He's gonna get a reward. All right, so this day here, we are glad that God saw to it that all of us got this great message of the gospel. You ever say that? You ever say, God, I'm glad that somebody brought it to me? A chap named uh, Layman Longnecker was the agent in Abaco. You know what he said? God asked him to come to Abaco. After my conversion, you know what Layman Longnecker did? went back to the United States. He said, Rex, somehow I believe that I came only to reach you. But thank God. In this light, forgive me now for this, in this light, the Bahamian church is out of step. We still only want to receive the message from others. There, 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 there are millions waiting still on this planet, this same planet, to hear from the Bahamian voice that same message that people came from other places to give you. We, 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 we are more concerned about building our huge buildings and ha having our money and fun and have our happy times, but that's not the mission of the church. Make disciples of all men. Not just church members either. Disciples. Followers of me. They re reproduce who I am, like I am. For the mission that I came is their same mission. The world is waiting. But thank God somebody came. And you heard the message, and I did. Well, there's a very sad side to this issue today. We can't dodge it. So let's deal with it. Nothing to do with mourning and grieving, by the way, or missing, it's different. You see all the wonderful benefits of this precious gospel can only be enjoyed by those persons who obey its call. Just hearing the gospel and even saying, boy, that's nice. Uh, um, Brother Major, you could sure preach. That's a good message, boy. I man, man, some man, that's fine. <laughs> Ain't gonna get you nowhere. Just hearing the gospel and singing about it or watching its blessings outworking other people, none of this will benefit you if you do not yourself reach out to Jesus and embrace these treasures of the gospel's provision for yourself. Yes, my friends, sadly, we must sound the warnings. And it's a ugly warning. You know, I, I've been making a big mistake I've been trying to hide the truth in, in my conscience. So I look at a person and I know they're damned without Christ, right? 
and you, what could you do? You, you do your best. And, but just to think that that person who you know, someone for whom you care, will, will slip out into eternity and be gone from God forever and ever and ever. You'd rather not think about it. It's so painful to, to think about. Many persons will have no joyful presence with Christ after their death moment. Sadly, but truthfully, there is another experience for them who reject the gospel's call. Now, if you've got family members, when last you've been on your knees a little while? When last up tears came out of those eyes? When last you've had the courage to walk up to them straight in the house away where they are? John, John, it's time! Turn around, man! For God's sake, turn around! Give it up! Turn over! There is another experience, and it's real. If the presence of Christ is real, the absence from Christ is real. Jesus Christ himself, in terrible words, describes the misery and the wretchedness and hopelessness of such people. On one occasion, he says he warned that there will be wailing and weeping and gnashing of teeth. We used to sing years ago, the harvest is passing, the summer is ending. We used to sing, come to Jesus now. He powerfully proclaimed, these are Jesus' words now, the same lowly, humble, sweet Jesus we talk about. This is him, let's name him. I tell you whom to fear. He's talking to his contemporaries. Fear not those who can only kill the body. And after that, there is nothing else they could do. Now listen to this statement. If it wasn't in Jesus' lips, I won't believe it. Listen to this. But I tell you rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body and afterward cast into hell. Now, hell isn't exactly a pulpit word anymore, is it? Huh? There's more hell in the, in the curse words than the pulpits. But it got to be there. You, you, you can't preach heaven and not preach hell. You can't. They're both realities, they are both necessities to be understood. And there must be pain in Jesus to have to say that. Fear him. Fear him who is able to destroy body and soul. And after that destruction, cast them into hell. Your children, your grandparents, your uncles, your aunts. I mean, friends, let's grasp it, look at it, feel it, understand it. Either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. There's no in between there. There's no maybe so. I'll make it somehow. You can't, you will not make it. There's no other way. You can't cut a road other than the one that Jesus has already cut to get to God. Fear him. Hell is just as real as heaven is. And just as people go to heaven by choice, they go to hell by choice. Have you taken the step of inviting Jesus Christ? I like the way John, his servant, put it in, in his last letter we call Revelation. In one of the small letters in the big letter, he has Jesus saying these words.
Behold, behold, I stand. Right at the very climax of human existence, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that kind of him to even stand? Leave you alone and let him go. They deserve it. No, no, I'm coming at the door. I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice, now how simple. Not bring a million dollars. Not be nice and good and proper. And, no, if anyone hears my voice, you, you just hear me. And they'll open the door. You got two things to do. Hear me, acknowledge me, respond to me. Then I take over. I know how to get in you, when you open the door. I know how to do that. I will come in to him and sup with him. Expression of be, meaning we, we got it together good. Will you open the door? May God bless his word. I want to thank Pastor Rex for his faithfulness to the Word of God, reminding us that there is, there is a decision to be made, a decision to ignore the claims of Christ and uh, reap the consequence of a Christless eternity without him. And then there is a decision to receive him, as did Sister Geneva. And she enjoyed a relationship with him as Lord and Savior. Friends, my encouragement is for you to make that decision today, and there are pastors and persons of plenty who can help coach you in making that decision. I'm going to invite to come now and to pray for the family, uh, Pastor Stuart Kelly, who um, has been a servant of the church for so long, and more recently has moved from the eldership to being um, one of my associate pastors and a longtime friend of the Jolly family, specifically Sister Lucille. You know, Sister Lucille, as I sat there and watching the service unfold, I thought of our many experiences together, the many opportunities to minister together, you sitting over there leading the deaf ministry so ably, giving so much of yourself, the Awana ministry and so forth. So grateful that you brought Kennel Jones and the Jones family into this, into this church. And uh, a number of the Joneses are represented here. And we want to thank Jones Funeral Home, your brother-in-law, for um, funeralizing your mother. And just to the Jones family, you all are honorary members of grace in so many ways. You're, uh, we so miss your brother. He continues to have an impact on our church, though he's been, Sister Lucia was reminding me, it's been 15, 16 years. 13 years, 13 years, hard to believe it's been gone that long. But um, we, uh, we thank God for that close connection that has made you, made your family so much a part of this family. Uh, Pastor Stuart Kelly, please come and um, remember this grieving family. Lift them before the throne of grace as we have been doing. And uh, following that, we will sing together the recessional hymn, Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Good afternoon. I don't know if Pastor Lyle recalls, but I'm recounting the last visit we had with Sister Jolly. It was just a few months ago, uh, early in the year. And on, on that occasion, she had Pastor Lyle and I in conference, and Elder Pastor Carlisle was designated to watch the grandchild. And so he had him running up because we are pandemic, so we were on the outside, and Carlisle was running up and down with the grandchild. And the, we had such teasing for Pastor Carlisle at the end because 
When it was time to leave, the grandchild did not want him to go. And he had that poor little boy in tears. So he said it was his fault making the child cry. But it was really a precious time that we had, as she shared with us outside um, in the yard. And then a week before she passed, Pastor Carlisle called her and she told him that she was in pain. She was having some pain. We know the exploration of that pain, what the result is, and now we're here today. But let's remember this family together. I encourage you as I pray that you turn your hearts toward Lucille and, uh, and all of the jollies. Father, we come on behalf of this family. And Lord, we acknowledge that these are very, very difficult moments for families to say farewell to someone that you love, someone who's been around all your life. She's the older, 87, so all of Lucille's life she's been there. And what a wonderful mother she's been to Lucille. And so, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We celebrate. They have the, the, the service is entitled a service of thanksgiving for our sister Jolly. And so we say thank you. We praise you. We honor you for her life, her ministry, all that she was to this family. I just pray that you would help them to recount the years that they spent together, the wonderful times of celebration. I read in the program about the birthday, the last birthday celebration, and what a special time it was. Help them to hold on to all of those precious memories and to turn their thoughts to you in praise and thanksgiving because it's an indication of your blessing, your goodness. We know that this is especially painful because of the sudden passing. We hear that there's pain and a week later she's gone. Lord, we know that that meant that you took her out of suffering because we know that there's so many times when the illness is protracted, the pain is difficult and you watch as your loved ones suffer. But you were merciful to her because she's had good health all those years. And so we thank you for the way you've handled it, Lord. We, we, we miss our loved ones when they pass, but we acknowledge your sovereignty, your control, your, that you're in charge and you make the final call. We pray for confidence, strength for the days ahead. There's days and weeks and months and years ahead when they will reflect and there will be the little absence because there's a hole in their hearts is missing the person that they love. So we ask for you to continue to give them strength, especially now, Lord, as they look forward to just in a few moments around the graveside, a very difficult time for families as well. Strengthen them, Lord, as they say farewell and give them the assurance that you're the kind of God who never leaves, never forsakes. You'll always be there. We thank you, even as we've been singing earlier in the, in the service, there's a glad reunion day that they have to look forward to when they will see her again, if they know Jesus. Because by her testimony, we know that she's gone to be with you. And so those of us who are going to celebrate in that glad reunion, Lord, must know the Lord Jesus. We just pray and thank you for the way that um, she's been honored by this family. And then we ask, Lord, for your continued strength and encouragement and all of your presence, powerful presence. You're under girding arms, powerful arms that will hold them up at a time when they cannot hold themselves. We put them before you. We thank you for your blessing. And we ask that it will rest on them now and in the days ahead. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Kelly. Let's all stand as we prepare to leave this sanctuary and go to the graveside. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and bright. He'll prepare for us a place When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be When we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory 